every New Zealander. Nikki Wagner. Mr. Speaker, it's great to be speaking today with the other women MPs for the National Party. The inspiration for this all women's debate is the funeral today of Baroness Margaret Thatcher. Because love her or hate her, and there are many in both camps, she was a powerful and determined woman, and she crashed through the glass ceiling of UK politics. Now, internationally, New Zealanders have been given credit for leading the empowerment of women, but even so, it's been a slow and imperfect process. In 1893, New Zealand was the first country to give women the vote, and that was a fantastic achievement of Cape Shepherd from Christchurch and her supporters. But it took until 1919 for an act to be passed to allow women to stand for Parliament, and until 1933, until the first woman MP, Elizabeth McCombs, was elected. And she was elected because her husband died in office. It was the mid-80s before the number of MPs, women MPs reached double figures. But with MMP, we went from 20 to 30 per cent of women, but there has been little changed ever since. 1997, we got the first female par um, um, Prime Minister, the Honourable Jenny Shipley, and then a second, and then a series of female appointments, which include the Speaker of the House, the Chief Justice, and the Governor General. At one stage, all four senior appointments were held by women. Now there is only one. But thanks to those who have gone before, the door is open, and that's the way it should be. Not quotas, not pedantic balancing, but an absolute open process for selecting the best person for the job. If New Zealand wants to grow the economy, protect our environment, increase our quality of life for the next generation, we need to make sure that the talents and skills of women are fully understood and used. And we need to appreciate more of what women can offer, not just the narrow skill set that is generally recognised and utilised. Margaret Thatcher may have been the first and only Prime Minister of the UK, but she got that position through stubborn aggressiveness and basically outmanning the men. Often it's a crisis that provides opportunities for women. During the Second World War, women ran our businesses, they ran our farms, and in many cases, record results, bumper crops and top returns were delivered. During the earthquakes in Christchurch, in the media, we saw men in uniforms and fluoro vests and hard hats, and that was good. But everywhere women less visible were also doing the hard yards, doing the invaluable work, long-term planning, organising, supporting, making things happen, creating new solutions, advocating for the community, and making sure that everyone was being looked after. To hear their stories and recognise their achievements, I organised a series called A Bird's Eye View. And it has been both fascinating and inspiring. We've heard from Mary Devine from Ballantines, who was instrumental in the Restart Mall, from Di Lucas about the Christchurch Black Maps, which shows how it affected our geotech, from Karen Gilliland about how midwives kept delivering during the disaster and how they rebuilt a better and stronger headquarters. We've been fascinated by the work of Coralie Wynne, Gap Filler, the Ministry of Awesome, and much, much more. And every week I see new recovery stories led by women that are worth telling. So, as we rebuild in Christchurch, and as our country strives for a brighter future, we must be smart enough, we must be bold enough to appreciate and utilise the human capital of all our citizens, all our citizens, men and women. Right, Honourable Winston Peters. Mr. Speaker, I met Maggie Thatcher. She was uh, beautiful.